Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Donald Tusk, the leader of the opposition who could lead the next governing coalition, apparently told supporters that he might be Prime Minister for only one year, before going back to Brussels to replace Ursula von der Leyen as European Commission President. According to Radio Z, Tusk made these remarks during coalition talks aimed at forming a new government in Poland. During his election campaign, Tusk had stated that he aimed to hold accountable members of the previous government, as well as their appointees at state-owned enterprises, public media and the judiciary for a period of 400 days. When asked about these issues, Michał Kobosko, vice president of Poland 2050 and Donald Tusk's ally, gave an evasive answer. This is the personal decision of Chairman Tusk, how long he is about to serve as prime minister. No one is taking the prime minister's chair assuming it is only a temporary job. It is a grave responsibility. The reports coincide with the words of Donald Tusk on the 5th of May 2022, when he gave the time frame of his future government. Give me 100 days, perhaps 400 days. Let me sweep things with a new broom and I'll gladly leave it to more delicate people. The leader of the Civic Platform Party has already abandoned Polish politics in favour of the European position. In 2014, he became president of the European Council, which he managed for two terms. Now he plans to return to his colleagues from Brussels and we should wish him luck, because he will not be very useful for Poland. A year ago, Donald Tusk's words were leaked to the internet in which he complained that he was forced to act in Polish politics politics again. I am demotivated by the knowledge that I will have to run for office. It's such a terrible thought that I'll be sitting there again, in that Vieska Street. The Civic Platform and previously the Liberal Democratic Congress were generously financed by German entities such as the Adenauer and Bohl Foundations. According to commentators, a possible position for Tusk would be a kind of gift. I have the impression that Donald Tusk, both joined the campaign and now as he prepares to take power as Prime Minister, is doing some commissioned work with a specific completion date. Meanwhile, yesterday information appeared about the possibility of paying Poland an advance payment from the National Reconstruction Plan in the amount of 5 billion euro. However, first, Donald Tusk must become Prime Minister. The first step is to create a new government in Poland. Then we will start a discussion about going as fast as possible with the reforms. It is necessary to implement some reforms before the European Commission makes a final assessment of the Polish National Recovery Plan. The European Commission did not pay Poland the money owed, citing alleged violations of the rule of law. As it turns out, however, the only obstacle was the law and justice government. The opposition designated me as Prime Minister, so if it is my government, we will take these steps very quickly so that the money will arrive in December. President of the Polish People's Party, Zwadysław Kosniak Kamisch, said that the new parliamentary majority is law-abiding, so there will be no problem with the payment of European funds. The elections were won by parties guaranteeing the rule of law, guaranteeing compliance with the Constitution and agreements with the European Union. Ursula von der Leyen had agreed with President Andrzej Duda that Poland would receive the funds due when the disciplinary chamber of the Supreme Court was liquidated. Poland fulfilled its part of the bargain, and still the funds remained frozen. Poland is still waiting for the payment of funds from the National Recovery Plan. Poland is to receive over 100 billion zloty in subsidies and almost 52 billion in the form of preferential loans. After almost nine months of pre-trial detention, civic platform politician Vladimir Karpinski has been released because he has become a member of the European Parliament. Karpinski, a politician from the civic platform, had been in custody on suspicion of accepting a bribe of 5 million zloty. After the opposition won the elections, one of the first actions of the new Speaker of the same was to launch the procedure to release the coalition party politician from custody. Polish prosecutors have lifted the temporary arrest of former Minister Władimierz Karpinski after the Speaker of the Sejm issued a decision confirming that Karpinski had become a member of the European Parliament. In connection with the issue by the Speaker of the Polish Sejm of a decision confirming that Władimierz Karpinski has become a member of the European Parliament, the public prosecutor has been forced to lift the preventative measures applied to the subject. The suspect's release from custody will have a negative impact on the further course of the proceedings, a statement from the prosecutor's office said. Karpinski came fourth in the 2019 European Parliament elections but can now take up the mandate as the candidates who came first and second were both elected to the Polish Parliament on the 15th of October and the person who came third died in May. On the 27th of February, officers from the Central Anti-Corruption Bureau arrested Karpinski, who served as a finance minister in Donald Tusk's 2013-2015 government. He is a suspect in a corruption investigation that has already led to the arrest of former Deputy Finance Minister Rafael Baniak. Baniak and two businessmen, who were also arrested, are suspected of illegally awarding contracts worth a total of 600 million zloty to the Warsaw-based waste management company MPO, which was headed by Karpinski. In a statement released
released on Thursday, the National Prosecutor's Office said the previous rulings of various courts extending the temporary detention of Vladimir K have positively confirmed the evidence compiled by the prosecutor, all of which conclude that there is a high probability that the suspect committed the crimes of corruption of which he is accused, which consist of accepting bribes amounting to almost 5 million zloty. Decades after the Cold War meetings between leaders of the United States and the Soviet Union, a new world summit happened on American soil. United States President Joe Biden met Communist China's leader, Xi Jinping. The signals are mixed. On the one hand, she offered to send more pandas to the United States to cheer American children. On the other, the aging Joe Biden referred to Xi as a dictator, just hours after the apparently productive talks. The two leaders had a substantive discussion on Taiwan, with Xi telling Biden that Taiwan was the biggest, most dangerous issue facing the two superpowers, a senior United States official told reporters. Did Xi Jinping outline the conditions under which China would attack Taiwan? Look, I reiterate what I've said since I've become president, what every previous president of late has said, that uh, we, uh, we maintain the agreement that there is a one-China policy and that uh, I'm not going to uh, change that. That's not going to change. And so uh, that's about the extent to which we discussed it. I, I think I, I know the man. I know his modus operandi. He's been, uh, we have disagreements. He has a different view than I have on a lot of things. But he's been straight. I don't mean that it's good, bad, or indifferent. He's just been straight. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we, as I said, the thing that I, I find most assuring is he raised, and I fully agree, that either one of us have any concern, Mr. Ambassador, any concern about anything between our nations or happening in our region, we should pick up the phone and call one another and we'll take the call. That's an important progress. China is ready to be a partner and friend of the United States and there is plenty of room for bilateral cooperation, President Xi Jinping told American executives in San Francisco on Wednesday as the leader looks to reassure global business and overcome the country's struggles to entice foreign investment. The U.S. executives dined with Xi on the margin of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum following a day of talks between Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden aimed at steadying relations between the world's two largest economies. The high security dinner was a chance for companies to hear directly from China's leader. China is willing to be a partner and friend with the United States. Our fundamental principles in handling Sino-US relations are mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and win-win cooperation. Whether China and the United States are ultimately rivals or partners is a fundamental and overarching question. The logic is very simple. If one views the other as the primary competitor, the most significant geopolitical challenge and an ever-approaching threat, it will inevitably lead to erroneous policies, wrong actions and erroneous outcomes. Regarding China's commitment to peaceful development as a threat and engaging in a zero-sum game of you lose, I win, your rise, my decline, is heading in the wrong direction. China never bets on the United States to lose, never interferes in United States internal affairs, and has no intention to challenge or replace the United States. China welcomes a confident, open, developing and prosperous United States. Similarly, the United States should not bet on China's loss, refrain from interfering in China's internal affairs, and should welcome a peaceful, stable and prosperous China. We aim to construct more bridges and pave more roads for people-to-people -people interactions, rather than creating various obstacles and fostering a Cold War mentality. Today I reached an important consensus with President Joe Biden. Both countries will introduce more measures to facilitate personnel exchange and promote cultural exchanges, including increasing the number of flights between China and the United States, holding high-level dialogues on tourism and optimizing the visa application process. The high security dinner was a chance for companies to hear directly from China's leaders as they search for ways to navigate China's economic slowdown. The U.S. push to de-risk some American supply chains away from China and uncertainty caused by China's expanding security rules. The event attracted nearly 400 in attendance, including business and government officials and academics. According to Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, the military uncovered significant material in its operation at the Al Shifa Hospital. Israel said its commandos were still searching through the Al-Shifa hospital more than a day after they entered its grounds as part of an offensive to wipe out Hamas militants in the Palestinian enclave. Israel said the hospital served as Hamas's headquarters and a weapons depot.
I arrived today at the headquarters of the division whose special forces also operate inside Al Shifa Hospital. There are significant findings there. The operation continues and it is done in a precise, selective, but very, very determined manner. The more we deepen this operation, increase the pressure on Hamas and erode more headquarters, damage more tunnels, eliminate more operatives, and bring down more heads of the organization, the greater the chance of returning our hostages. Because this enemy only understands power, and we explain it to it very well what power is. We are striking Hamas above ground and below the surface of the ground. We have struck thousands of terrorists and we will reach them all. The Israeli Defense Force has so far released pictures of what it says were rifles and flak jackets found on the premises. Since of a vast underground Hamas command headquarters, they say was operating in the tunnels beneath it. Commander of the Israeli Air Force, Tomei Bar, said, We have struck thousands of terrorists. Gaza's health ministry said Israeli soldiers had removed dead bodies from the hospital grounds and destroyed cars parked there, but they were not letting staff or patients leave. An Israeli military official said on Thursday that commandos were searching through every building and every floor of the hospital, while hundreds of patients and medical staff remain there. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us the weather, Poland Daily Business and more programmes. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.